Hello everyone, welcome to our Thursday night Facebook Live. We are jumping in here. The week is almost over. The weekend is around the corner and you might be just as excited as I am um, to have the weekend almost here. <laughs> so we are uh, going to be getting started in just a few moments. If you are just jumping on, give me a big hello in the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be talking about food. And we've been talking about food all week because it is such a big, big topic because so many people reach out to me with endless food questions. They're struggling to eat. They're finding that it doesn't matter what they eat, their body is reacting. Sometimes they even find that they're restricting food because they feel like they need to be able to go out and leave the house, right? They need to be able to go out and function in the world so they restrict food or drink so that they won't have any unexpected or irritable angry bowel movements that surprise them. Or if they're not sure where the closest toilet's gonna be, they start to plan their route and they plan their food. And so food is such a popular, popular topic that comes up not only on the Facebook page here, but especially in our private Facebook group, the Love Your Guts IBS support group. Hey Eva, so it's such a, it's such a big, big um, thing that people are feeling overwhelmed by. So we did a whole week on this topic and if you've been following along, I hope you're getting some questions answered and getting some clarity around why this whole food thing feels so anxiety provoking. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about five massive mistakes around food that are keeping your guts angry. And tonight I'm Alyssa, your host, <laughs> uh, nutritionist and gut expert here who hangs out uh, both on this Facebook page and in the Facebook group. And I, I'm so excited to get into this topic tonight. So let's just dive right in. So <clears throat> first of all, we know that food is feeling really overwhelming for you because let's be honest, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. There is endless diets available to you, all sorts of different names to them that claim to fix your gut. And I'm gonna just preface this whole talk and tell you right now that while food is so, so important, it is not going to fix your gut. It's not gonna fix your gut on its own, no matter, no matter how perfect your diet is. It is one piece of the puzzle, and it's absolutely critical, which is why we've spent a whole week chatting about it, but I wanna be crystal clear that this is why it's not working. It feels like it's not working because often I find people are putting too much weight in wanting the diet to get rid of all their symptoms. And quite frankly, it's just not realistic. And I don't want you to have unrealistic expectations when you're putting in hard work and lots of energy and time to try and get your symptoms resolved. I don't want you to have unrealistic expectations going into making these changes. Because if you're putting in all that time and energy and you're thinking, this is gonna be the thing, this is gonna fix it, and then you get to the other side and it's not really working, it starts to, a, a piece, it's like a small piece of you dies, quite frankly, right? It's like a piece of you withers away and loses the faith that it's possible for you to fix your gut. So it's really important that we have that clear up front so that we have realistic expectations. And I always talk about when we're talking about fixing the gut, there's going to be many different contributing causes. And again, food is super important. And so we're gonna dive into that tonight. But if you are at a point, if you are watching this tonight and you are feeling like you've tried it all and nothing seems to be working, what I want you to remember is that is just a sign from your body that there is a stone unturned. There is some piece of the puzzle that is still missing for you. And we just have to go and resolve that piece. We have to go and make sure that we have done our due diligence. Take a fine tooth comb through this sucker and make sure that you're not missing any pieces. And so if it's not, if it's not working or if it feels like you're stuck, there's just a piece of the puzzle still missing and we're gonna go and fix that together. So food, <laughs> back to the food. Number one, 
we're going to talk about these five massive food mistakes that people are making that are keeping your guts angry and the first one is that it is so common and let me know in the comments if you're doing this are you limiting your foods to be able to control your poop so that you can go out and function in the day let me know in the comments with a yes let me know what you are avoiding, what foods you're finding are triggering, um, what sort of things are you limiting or eliminating, I should say, um, to be able to function. So this is such a common, common thing that I hear. And, and first and foremost, the number one massive problem with this, limiting food so that you can avoid a bowel movement or angry bowel movements so that you can go out into the world it's no way to live, right? Because what that what's happening is your bowels, in this case, are controlling your life. And I don't know about you, but when I was fixing my gut, come hell or high water, I was gonna figure out how to fix this thing because I refused to accept that I was meant to feel like this. I was going to be relentless in my pursuit of fixing my gut of feeling better, of finding the ways, plural, um, and the things, plural, that I needed to be doing to resolve these imbalances within my gut. And so when we get to a place where we kind of surrender to it and we start to limit our ability to live or we, we restrict our ability to enjoy things and thrive, and we start to um, accommodate the the illness we'll say that's no way to live it's like throwing in the towel and being like I give up I'm just gonna try and manage this sucker guys I don't want you to manage this anymore who here is ready to finally get rid of the gas bloating diarrhea constipation the itchiness the brain fog the fatigue let me know in the comments with a yes if you are ready to get rid of this. Because I'll tell you right now, it's absolutely possible for you. And by limiting these foods, again, this is not only no way to live, um, but the important thing to remember is that foods aren't necessarily the problem here that are causing your symptoms. And so when we get into this limiting of foods, what happens is often you end up limiting foods that actually help to feed your good bacteria, okay? And this is where we're gonna get into some other, the other mistakes that come and happen, they kind of hang out together, but we also need these certain foods to feed our good bacteria, but also to help us regulate and balance our poops. There's so much fear being instilled around food and I wanna help you break past that fear. I wanna help you get rid of the fear of these health foods and start having some confidence in eating. You know, I can understand why a Big Mac or, you know, <laughs> I don't know, deep fried foods, processed foods, like I can understand you saying, Alyssa, I gotta eliminate these. Absolutely, I'll encourage that. But the problem is many of you aren't, aren't eliminating or aren't focusing on that. Many of you have gotten to the point where you are limiting and elimin eliminating, oh my goodness, limiting and eliminating both <laughs> um, healthy foods like vegetables because you're concerned the fiber is going to be painful and hurt your bowel movements. Am I right? So again, guys, this whole thing is rooted in fear and that is no way to live. So again, limiting foods to control your poop so that you can go out into the world to live, that's a number one mistake, and this is rooted in fear, and you don't have to live your life in fear. You don't have to live your life in fear. What I'm hearing is you need a proven system and you need some guidance, you need some confidence in the foods that you're eating. What would confidence do for you? How would it feel to be confident in the foods that you're eating? That's what we want to talk about, right? All right. Let's dive into number two. So number two, following a restrictive diet, thinking that this is gonna fix your gut. Mm, not quite. <laughs> As I talked about at the beginning, guys, and if you're just joining, I'm gonna reiterate this. Following a restrictive diet, that's one problem, but also thinking food is going to fix your gut is sort of another animal in itself. So we kind of got two in one here. 
But food, again, I'll be crystal clear, food is not gonna fix your gut on its own. Food is so powerful. Food is so important and your food decisions are either helping or hurting you, okay? So to be clear, food is important, but on its own, it's not gonna fix your gut. And the problem when we put all the eggs in that one basket, the problem with that is when it doesn't work, because it won't, it never will on its own, is you start to get frustrated and you wonder why, like, I don't understand, I can eat this food today and feel fine, but I eat it tomorrow and I feel like I'm nine months pregnant. And there are other times where you can't, you can't figure out what food is causing the problem or you're 100% sure that all foods are the problem and you start restricting and eliminating to the point where you start to run out of foods to eat. Because again, the thinking is you've put all these eggs in this one basket that food is gonna fix it and so you have to change the food. And when it's not working, you continue to try and change the food instead of looking at like the other potential causers, like an underactive stomach, like stress, like lack of sleep, lack of water, antibiotic use, all of these other contributing factors, hormones. I gotta throw hormones in there, right? There are so many other things that are causing the gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, and food is a piece of that puzzle. So eliminating and following restrictive diets is uh, only going to potentially cause more problems. And I've done lots of talks on this, but I'll just brief briefly sum up this piece that following two restrictive diets, A, it's not sustainable. And the second that you come off that diet, your symptoms are gonna come rushing back. It promotes disordered eating. It eliminates good whole foods like broccoli, garlic, onions, artichokes, good healthy foods that feed your good bacteria so that your gut can be happy again. So this is, this is a big massive problem that we tend to fall into and I want you guys to remember, please remember this. It's taken you, I don't know how old you are, but it's taken you 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years to collect all of the experiences um, and even conditions and, and living in certain environments that have created your symptoms. And so it's not gonna go away in a couple of days, okay? It's gonna take some time. Does that mean that you're not gonna get any relief? No, but it's gonna take some time. So patience, young grasshopper, right? It's gonna be okay. All right, let's talk about number three. This one, um, I think we, we all do in some way, and it doesn't just affect those that have gut issues, although I find it's really common for those that have gut issues. Who here loves them some carbs? Who here loves carbs? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what your favorite carb is. Do you love rice, pasta, breads, crackers? What carbs are you using to comfort yourself, but also to try and settle your gut? This is like the age old, you know, um, recommendation that you hear out there to follow like the brat diet, which is, you know, has rice and toast in it. There's other apples and bananas too, but rice, toast, pastas, like crackers, those types of things. That's what we gravitate towards when we're not feeling good. Even when we're sick, like growing up, I remember it was like soup and like those salty crackers. What do, what do you call those? Soda crackers. So, so many of you are comforting your upset stomach with carbs. And what happens, the reason this happens is it's not your fault, but you're not feeling hot. You're maybe nauseous or bloated. You're scared to eat because you're not sure when there's going to be another explosive bowel movement or you're praying to the poop gods that you're gonna finally have a bowel movement. And so you're scared to eat other foods and you get to the point where you're not eating enough and so your blood sugar drops. If you're not eating enough, your blood sugar is going to drop. And what happens is your body is this beautiful mechanism that is going to try its very best to balance itself, to keep you upright, to keep you from keeling over or fainting, quite frankly. And so when your blood sugar drops, it will have you start craving carbs especially, but quick sugars 
things that are going to spike that blood sugar back up so that you don't crash. And so that's why when you're lacking food through the day, you come home, you could eat a, you could eat a loaf of bread, right? Margie's saying love carbs, toast, muffins, Eva's saying barley, absolutely. So we gravitate towards these because they're fillers, but they also kind of feel like they sit heavy in the stomach. So when we're not feeling too hot, it feels like it kind of settles the stomach down, right? So this is a big problem because um, what happens is we end up overeating this particular food category. And when we start to talk about balancing out your food groups, I'm gonna to talk to you about this a little bit more tonight, but we gotta talk about balancing out these food groups. So I'm talking about protein, fats, carbs, vegetables, fruits, okay? Very simple. We have to make sure we're getting a little bit of the rainbow. We gotta taste the rainbow here. And for those that are struggling with gut issues, we tend to taste a lot of the carbs. <laughs> And we do that in, and often because we're not getting enough things like protein or vegetables, all right? And so this becomes a problem because your gut is trying to break down all these foods, okay? Your, your gut produces digestive enzymes, they're like Pac-Men, and they go through and they help to break down those foods. And it's kind of like your gas tank, right? You've got fuel in that gas tank and it'll, it'll take you so far and then you gotta fill up the tank again. It's the same thing with your enzymes in that if you're constantly eating the same food group, you're gonna run out of that particular enzyme that breaks down that food. So if you're constantly eating carbs, you're eventually going to run out of the enzymes that break down that carb. And what starts to happen is now when you eat those carbs, they're not being broken down properly. In fact, they end up sitting in your gut. They start to ferment, like not the good kind of fermentation. I'm not talking about your sauerkraut, bad kind of fermentation. They call this gut rot. And that creates a gas buildup. And that gas buildup is going to literally give you bloating, sometimes gas, okay, at the back end. But that's part of the problem when we start to overeat these certain food categories is we're not only missing out on the other nutrients from these other food groups, but we start to deplete our digestive enzymes and we start to deplete our body's ability to break down foods. So this is so, so important. It's absolutely critical that you learn how to balance your plate. It's no longer about taking out FODMAPs. Okay, it's not about taking out high FODMAPs. It's not just about following anti-inflammatory foods. It's not about going on an AIP diet, GAPS diet, keto diet. It's not about that. It's about teaching you how to properly balance your plate so that you're ensuring that you are helping your gut, not hurting your gut. So that you're maximizing your nutrition and not depleting your body's ability to digest the foods that you're working hard to actually get in your body. Because let's be honest, when your gut's not feeling good, you don't want to eat. So it's hard work eating, right? All right. Marsha says, baked goodies. That fabulous daily gluten-free vegan half muffin has become a whole one with coffee. Marjo, you and your muffins. I'm telling you, girl. I know you love those. Okay, Petra's saying potatoes every way. So absolutely, potatoes another really great one. I didn't even think of that. Um, so, so important. I dropped my other sheet on the floor here. There we go. All right, let's talk about the next thing, number four. So the next massive mistake that we tend to be making with our food that's keeping your gut angry is since nothing's really working, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want anyways, right? It's like, well, I've tried all this, I've tried restricting, I've tried eliminating, I've tried all the different things, and I'm still getting all of these symptoms. I'm still finding myself on the toilet, either waiting to go or waiting to stop going, right? And so you get to the point where you're like, screw it, it's not working, I'm gonna eat the pizza. I'm gonna eat the chips, I'm gonna eat the chocolate, I'm gonna eat all the things that I know I shouldn't eat and I know I'm gonna pay hard later, but I'm gonna eat it because nothing's working anyways. Who's done that? Don't be shy, 
I know you're watching this thinking, oh my God, that's so me. <laughs> if that's you, let me know in the comments because you're not alone. So many of us have done that. And here is the thing. I want you to remember, I'm not here to give you shit for being human and eating pizza, chips, or chocolate. Like, that happens for me too sometimes, okay? I'm not immune to this stuff. I'm not immune to this stuff either. I'm not here to give you shit for eating those foods. What I'm here to remind you of is that again, it's taken you years to get here. And the worst thing that you can do is expect your body to have its shit sh sorted out in like two days right or like a week and I see so many of you you've tried so many darn things and you want like you want it to be gone now like you want quick results like now and so you try something and when that doesn't work in like a week or less you're like eh, didn't work next and you're trying the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and I used to do this too when I was trying to fix my gut I'd go into the health food store and I'd buy some like expensive probiotic and I'd take that home I'd be like everyone's talking about them it's you know must be the bee's knees so I better give it a try and I take a probiotic and then that didn't work so then I go back to health food store and be like probiotics don't work and I try a different supplement and then a different one and then a different one and different foods and different diets and when none of it was working I was so frustrated. And so what I want you to be reminded of is don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Be reminded that it's again taking you 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years, however old you are, to get where you are today. And it's gonna take a little longer than a week for your body to get it sorted out. And just because that probiotic or dietary change or whatever didn't work, or didn't eliminate all of your symptoms like you wanted it to, doesn't mean that it's not actually working. Again, remember, it's just that there's other pieces of the puzzle. So while your diet can be maybe causing 70% of your bloating, constipation, and gas, another 10% of that could be caused from hormones, another 20% from stress, another 2% from not drinking enough water, and so we wanna look at all the things. So again, don't throw in the towel because your body needs time to gain traction. Your body needs time to gain that traction, to be able to slowly heal, to be able to trust that you've got its back again. You're gonna feed it, you're gonna take care of it. And so it's really hard on the body when you're trying you know, to make these changes and then within a week, if it's not working, switching back to old habits, it doesn't, ha it doesn't get a chance to get going and you're throwing in the towel, right? So be patient with it. Give your body some time. Give your body a chance to get working, to get itself balanced again. And again, know that the diet is a big piece of the puzzle and you are going to have to address the other causative factors to have the best results. All right. Eva's saying, yep, but get acid reflux so bad. So this is a good example of how, you know, diet's really important. Diet's not going to fix acid reflux. That's an, uh, a reflection of an underlying root imbalance going on in the gut. We got to fix that. Okay. Sherry's saying, you know from my food journal, that is me for sure. You bet, girl, but you are not alone. You're so not alone. So many of us are in that position. Petra's saying, how do I reduce the bad gut bacteria and increase the good guys? Um, that's something that I teach in the Love and Trust Your Guts program. It, I don't really have like a straight, just there's the answer because it's a full, complete gut repair system. Uh, one of the big mistakes that I see people making is they go to the health food store and they'll buy like a, a box, like a... Uh, bacterial cleanse box like a candida cleanse and they take that box and they think they're golden good to go but there's a much bigger picture going on we have to fix the reason why those bad bacteria came in the first place and so the whole love and trust your guts program that's what we do um, alrighty let's jump into number five so here is here's the the big big piece um, there's a very good chance that you are guessing. You're guessing your way through food. And you don't actually know how much protein, fats, carbs, veg, your individual body needs. And this is, this is not a what everybody needs to fix their IBS. 
I'm talking to you as an individual. Based on your height, weight, age, and activity level, do you know how much protein, fats, carbs, veg, and fruit you should be having at each meal? Do you know what and when you should be eating? If the answer is no, please know that you're not alone. In fact, I suspect that probably everyone watching this right now doesn't know. And that's okay, because quite frankly, we weren't taught to know how to fix our guts. We've never really been taught proper nutrition. And this wasn't something I learned until I became a registered holistic nutritionist and gut expert. So give yourself a break here for a moment, but know that this has got to happen. You need to know that. You need to know that. And if you don't know that, you're guessing. And and that's, that's really overwhelming, right? That's where it feels frustrating because you're reading all these blogs out there. They've got conflicting information. There's all these different diets out there telling you eat this food, don't eat this food. Swap that food, no, don't swap that food. And so it's like feeling like an octopus on roller skates and you're, you're feeling really super overwhelmed and, and scattered about it. And so the problem with this is um, it, it either causes one of two things. It causes inaction or it causes you to just to be totally off track, quite frankly, right? And until you get this hashed out, your nutrition is not going to be on point. And as we talked about, your nutrition is such a big piece of the puzzle. And so we've got to get that, we got to get that figured out. Right? And so this is why I see so many people, they're eating all the right foods, but it's a, it's real, it's a real mess because they're skipping meals through the day or they're skipping snacks or they're eating meals that are almost just carbs and fat, no protein, no vegetable or fruit. And, and it's making a real storm for their gut. And so this is so, so critical guys. Like I can't stress this enough that you need to know what your individual body's needs are. The one size fits all does not work. So what I'll say is of all those five mistakes, mistakes that we just went through. And again, this is not, uh, meant to be like a, I don't want you to feel any shame or guilt around this. Like I have been there myself. I did this the hard way. I fixed my gut the hard way. I did all the wrong shit first before I figured out that I needed to be on a complete gut repair system with an individualized uh, nutrition plan. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't know this either at the beginning. But if you have nodded your head yes to any of the things that we have talked about tonight, then I want you to keep listening because I'm going to help sort some of this out for you tonight. So again, I'm going to reiterate FODMAP. GAPS, AIP, Keto, Paleo, like I can't even begin to name all the diets out there because there's so many of them. None of those are the answer. They don't work. That's why you're here searching because you've tried them, they're not working, and you're desperate for some relief. A little bit, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. I get it because I've been there. All right, but they don't work. So I'm going to show you what you need to get this sorted out. So if you're tired of feeling conflicted, if you're tired of feeling the overwhelm, if you're reading all the blogs and you're trying to piece together all these things and it's really just left you feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and your gut getting worse, then let's just get this nutrition piece hashed out right away and get it cleared up so that you don't need to be guessing anymore. So what I have done is in the Love and Trust Your Guts program, every single one of my clients is given a personalized gut meal plan. And I have made that available to every single one of you guys. So you don't even need to sign up for the Love and Trust Your Guts program. I've made available the personalized gut meal plan for you so that you can determine what your individual meal plan is based on your height, weight, age, activity level. And I literally break down every single meal, what food category you need and in what portion. You see, let me backtrack for a second. Meal plans, traditional meal plans, they don't really work either, okay? If anyone has followed a meal plan, um, you know this. I'll tell you what happened to me. When I was trying to fix my gut, I went to a nutritionist, she gave me this meal plan outline, and 
when it was over, when I ran out of the meal plan, I had no clue how to feed myself. I had no clue. I didn't learn a damn thing because I was just, it's like when you're dri you know, driving through town just following the GPS, you never actually learn what streets you're on and where you're going. So the second that you get there, if you ever lost that GPS, you'd be screwed, right? It's the same thing with traditional meal plans. Traditional meal plans will say like, Monday morning, you should be making blueberry pancakes. And you might say, Alyssa, go pound salt. I don't have time to make pancakes on a Monday morning with my kids, right? Or I gotta get to work. Pancakes, eh, not happening. Or what if you hate pancakes? I'm not a fan of pancakes. What if you are allergic to blueberries? This is not gonna work. It's not gonna work, right? So in this personalized gut meal plan, we've literally laid out breakfast. We break down exactly what portions of each food group you need. And the best part is you get to pick the foods that you love to eat. So you don't need me telling you to eat Brussels sprouts if you hate Brussels sprouts. You get to pick the vegetables that you love to eat. You get to pick the proteins that you love to eat. But not only that, guys, in this personalized gut meal plan package, I've also included specific food lists that help you understand which foods fall under which category, what the portions are, and I'm super clear on which foods are actually helping you fix your gut. So that you have a very clear roadmap with confidence, you know which foods you can be eating that are helping your guts, and this is what you really are able to take from it, is you're able to find a simpler way to eat, right? We need to simplify your food. If your food is feeling like a source of anxiety and stress for you, then you need this plan because it is not helping you every single meal feeling scattered, not wanting to eat, not sure what to eat, feeling the anxiety, not being able to go out with friends or family because quite frankly, it's not that there isn't anything for you to eat there. You just don't know what to eat that isn't gonna land you on the toilet and in pain. Am I right? So. Wouldn't it be so much better if you had a roadmap with some confidence knowing that these are all the foods that I can eat and I know that they're not hurting my gut. This is how I need to balance my plate. So I can't just have a bowl of pasta for dinner, but can I add some protein and what and vegetable, like what do I need to put on that plate? And so you can go out anywhere and know your exact plan and order what you need and have confidence that you are doing all that you need to help your gut. That's what it's about, guys. We need to arm you with some confidence, some peace of mind, lower the stress level, because that stress is contributing to your gut problems. And that's a whole other thing. All right. So if this is what you need right now, which if you're watching this, there's a real darn good chance this is what you need. I want you to click the link in the bio. Just, uh, just up above this, not the bio, click the link in uh, the description just above the video here. If you click that link, it's going to take you to a page and it's going to give you all of the details on this personalized gut meal plan. Guys, again, this is about giving you customized maximum nutrition. This is about giving you confidence. It's about giving you peace of mind. No more guesswork. Promise me you're not going to guess your way through this anymore because guessing is robbing you of your confidence. It's robbing you of the faith and the hope that it's possible for you to fix your gut. And so we're going to start giving you the proven systems so that you can actually have success. All right. Now, here's the amazing part about it. I have crazy discounted this crazy discounted this. I've never done this before. I've never offered this before. I don't know if I'm going to ever do it again. It's available until Friday, so tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you click the link above there, get all the details. But it's regular $150, and I've discounted it to just 47 bucks. I don't want food to be an obstacle anymore, and I really want this to be accessible for you. So 47 bucks, all in, you get access to our membership site, you get access to your customized, personalized gut meal plan, the food lists, a simpler way of eating, and some confidence, guys. That's what it's all about. All right, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. If this has been super helpful tonight, give it a like, give it a share, make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel, and we will see you guys next week. Bye.